It really has been almost three years since my last video, and with my return, I want to talk about five more sleeper cars that no one talks about. Buick is not typically known for producing high-performance cars, as the brand has traditionally focused more on luxury and comfort. However, one car comes to mind that does not meet this stereotype, that being the Buick Regal GS. The Regal name has been around since 1973, competing with the Grand Prix and the Cutlass Supreme, and was loved by many. While they had the option for a sedan and a wagon, the coupe would always sell the most with over 200000 in 1978. The 5th gen GS, in my opinion, is also forgotten. However, I feel like the 6th gen is more. The Buick Regal GS is the sportiest version of the the Regal mid-size sedan. It came equipped with a turbocharged 3.6 liter V6 engine that produces 310 horsepower and 282 pound-feet of torque, 0 to 60 in just 5.4 seconds. The Regal GS features a sports tuned suspension, Brembo brakes, and all-wheel drive. For the last generation, Buick came out with the Sportback and the Tourx. I think these are all attractive cars, however the public didn't agree. In 2020, they canceled the GS along with the Cascada and the Lacrosse. The reason for this car being so looked over is because of the competition. This segment included the TLX, the A4, the C-Class, and the Volvo S60. You guys are going to be shocked when I mention the next car, the 2007 Mitsubishi Galant Rally Art. You want a Lancer Evo, but you got a family and you might scare yourself bad in one of those. Here's the alternative, Mitsubishi's Galant Rally Art. Let's check it out. When we talk about Mitsubishi, we think of what? Two cars, the Lancer, the Eclipse. Well, we can't forget about the 3000 GT. You get my point, this company was popular 15, 20 years ago, you go to their website and they have practically nothing of interest. It's boring. What's not boring though is the Galant Rally Art. When we talk Galant, we think of a kind of crap mid-sized sedan. Personally, I like the look of them, but I'm different with my taste in cars. The Galant has been around for a while overseas and the purpose of this car was to be affordable and that was it. Mitsubishi has always been cheap and the Rally Art is no exception, although it did come standard with leather and heated seats. Yes, you heard me right, Galant Rally Art. Well, the Rally Art name is associated with Mitsubishi's performance division, known for its motorsport involvement and performance oriented vehicles. The Galant Rally Art aimed to capture some of that spirit and deliver a sportier driving experience compared to the standard Galant models. The Galant was equipped with a 3.8 liter V6 engine that produces 258 horsepower and 258 pound-feet of torque, 0 to 60 in around 6.1 seconds. The engine was similar to the Eclipse GT with a little less horsepower. There really wasn't much setting apart this over standard models on the outside. It had 18 inch wheels, a spoiler, and a little bit of badging. It also featured a sports tooth suspension, larger front and rear stabilizer bars, and a front strut tower brace for improving handling and performance. Here's one big flaw though. It was only offered with a 5 speed automatic, but it did have paddle shifters, so there's that. I also forgot to mention its front wheel drive making it even more unappealing. Overall, the 2007 Mitsubishi Glant Rally Art aimed to inject a bit of performance and excitement into the mid-size sedan segment, but numbers were low and with other cars on the market during this time, no wonder this car sold so poorly. The next entry on this list is a little bit more common but not appreciated. I'm talking about the 4th gen Nissan Altima SR, so these years will be from 2007 to 2012. The sedan is cool and definitely more underrated, but I think we can all agree that the coupe looks better, so that's what I'm going to go with. A little bit of history, the 350Z came out in 2003 after the end of the 300ZX. This was Nissan's way of getting back in the performance segment, and in 2009 they came out with the 370Z. I'm bringing this up because the Altima SR and SE coupes is like a long lost brother. And no, I'm not referring to the 2.5, but rather the 3.5. Which had a beefy 270 horsepower and 258 pound feet of torque. 0 to 60 in just 5.7 seconds. I know we don't like the CVT transmissions and these things, and that is one big flaw, but they did offer a six speed manual, which is definitely the way to go, and was offered from only 2008 and 2009. I must mention that the SR models were from 2010 to 2013, and the SE was from 2008 to 2009. And what's strange is the older models actually had more horsepower than the newer models. The 2012 had 258 horsepower versus 270. I don't know what happened with that. Compared to the sedan, which again is still a good choice, the coupe came with a sports tooth suspension and larger wheels enhancing its handling. The coupe also doesn't really have that classic how Ultima drivers drive. Man, I plugged the MSRP of this thing back in 2008 and in today's money, it would have cost almost 40000 I mean, today you can find one of these things between five and ten grand. These cars are road hard, put away wet, so finding a nice one isn't that common. Nevertheless, compared to the first two entries, this car by far has way more modifications that are offered on the aftermarket. The 3.5 in the Altima also is pretty similar to the 370Z engine.
The Fiesta in Focus stole the show for this car. Can you guess what it is? It's not the Taurus SHO, but instead the Ford Fusion Sport. Don't get me wrong, the SHO is a sleeper of its own, but I feel like it's a little bit more recognized since it's been around since 1989. The first gen Fusion came out in 2010 and lasted up until 2012. These had a 3.5 liter V6 producing 263 horsepower and 249 pound feet of torque. It wouldn't be until 2017 that the sport name came back for the Fusion and again, died a few years later. Little overview of the Fusion name, introduced back in 2005, the Fusion was a replacement for the Contour and the Taurus and shared the same platform with the Mazda 6 and the Lincoln MKZ. Anyway, they sold well and in 2010, Ford introduced the second generation which included a sport model. Now these are still cool and more affordable, however they don't have the twin turbo V6 that the third gens have. Both the Fusion and the SHO have a twin turbo V6. Obviously the SHO is bigger and heavier, but what's weird is that the torque output is less than the Fusion. The Fusion has 325 horsepower and 380 pound-feet of torque. Unfortunately, no manual was offered, just a six-speed automatic. On the plus side though, the sports trim came standard with all-wheel drive improving traction and stability. This car back in the day was around 35,000, which is quite nice when compared to the competition. And at the time, that was like V6 Accords and Camrys, Malibu Premiers, and Optima Turbos. The last car on this list, last but not least, whatever, Pontiac G6 GXP. GXP name, which stands for Grand Experimental Performance, was introduced in 2003 for the Pontiac Bonneville, which featured a supercharged V8. The Bonneville GXP was a success, and with that, Pontiac expanded the GXP name to other models such as the Grand Prix, Tarant, Solstice, and the G6. The G6 was introduced as a replacement for the Grand Am. These cars are no joke. They were equipped with 3.9 liter V6, which produced 252 horsepower, 251 pound of torque, 0 60, and just 5 5.9 seconds. And yes, like most cars on this, only automatic was available, and it only comes in front wheel drive. I must add that the only suspension tuning compared to the GT model was bigger wheels and tires. It's not very impressive, but with the GXP, you get that embarrassing wing that the GT did not have. So yeah, this car isn't the greatest in terms of performance, but it does go under the radar, and that could be because people think this car is ugly. Let me know in the comments if you'd like the Ultima Coupe better or the G6. Obviously, they are similar in their own ways, but they do have their differences.